we had a player named Mike Fitzgerald. This is one of my favorite stories. I got a call um, from a teacher said, I need to talk to you about one of your players. And this is prior to the national championship. Uh, and all of a sudden my heart sunk, like what, what happened here? And she said, hey, he, he went to every student in the class and said, we're playing you know, SC tomorrow night and you have to be there. It's in the stone, you have to be there and so on and so forth. And he even told me I had to be there. And I said, a little sigh relief, and I said, well, how's he doing in your class? And she says, that's the problem. He's not in my class. He believed in himself so much this is at a university level, not junior high or high school, that he would go around and tell people they had to be there. And when he was here, we were second, second, first, first. And did I teach him that? No, I was smart enough to get him here. But uh, I hope everybody has a Mike Fitzgerald on their team. That's a good one, I have to think about that. The biggest lesson I've learned in coaching. I want to say something smart, <laughs> I, I, philosophical. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'd say this. In this process, you have to be in the ballpark uh, with talent. And, uh, and yet, what I found that works here, and, and David Hunt actually mentioned this the other day, is that um, you want to be in the ballpark with, with talent but you have to have character and uh, you have to be with kids that are squared away. Uh, there are opportunities probably in every endeavor to take shortcuts or uh, to do things that aren't acceptable or to a, to a high standard and uh, so I always want uh, our staff and our players uh, to do things right and, and there's a championship standard for everything that we do. And, uh, I think, you know, uh, coaching is about meeting those standards. It was the crew from the mid-70s that really set the standard for, hey, here, here's how uh, it, it's done. And uh, then in the 80s, we had great talent. The 90s, George Romain, and then all of a sudden, Sean Rooney, Paul Carroll, Jonathan Winder. Uh, but it was probably that group uh, uh, the 78 waves, that group um, kind of set the standard that we refer to, I think, and, and I would refer to. And uh, that group, whenever there's a reunion, they all go to it, and a uh, pretty tight group. I've always tried to live a full day, and I'm not being philosophical here, but uh, I've always liked the early morning. I would see the, the landscaping crew here at PEP, and I always like to see who did stuff well. And then, you know, get to know them, uh, acknowledge them, and thank them. And I, I'm thinking of Margarito Alleman, who was here for years with the landscaping uh, department. And when he retired, they, I think they hired five guys to take his place, because he was so good at what he did. And, uh, it's always been neat for me at this institution to see people who are good at what they do. Sarah Jackson, Hung Lee, uh, Doug Hurley, Lee Katz. I could go on and on, Margarita Allman. They're good at what they do and I admire that. When I got here, uh, I was a little bit older, Pierce College uh, in the Army of Vietnam, Vietnam vet. and. Uh, and one day at, uh, I think it's Jerry's Tree up uh, near the, the plaza, fall of 72, and this guy says, hi friend, Bob Thomas. And I think he was the dean of students then, and uh, he had cowboy boots on and slacks and you know, uh, a jacket, and uh, we became lifelong friends. And he, that handshake uh, was awesome. He was, uh, uh, helping in the athletic department and he made volleyball full-time and uh, everybody knows when somebody's pulling for him and uh, it's for me it started with Bob Thomas obviously the coaches and volleyball people but Bob Thomas and then Gary Colson uh, Wayne Wright and John Watson Steve Potts and uh, and then the leadership of Pepperdine it, it's just been great you know uh, Howard White David Davenport Andy 
Uh, Andy has pulled for me as much as anybody I know, and I'll always be grateful for that. I have a little binder, three binder, you know, I'm old school with, uh, with every guy that's played here and uh, I enjoy staying in contact with them. But uh, one of the neat things about retiring is that uh, it gave me this really neat opportunity to thank all the people that were part of this journey and uh, each call, uh, you know, took about 20, 30 minutes, but it was an awesome 20 to 30 minutes and uh, I enjoyed that. Mike Beacons started this uh, uh, endowed scholarship for men's volleyball, and uh, I would like to, you know, get the alums to, to give back to that and allow this program to, to be at the very top in, in every way. If they played here, I'll, I'll twist their arm a little bit. That, hey, some people came before you. Some people made this possible, and uh, it's it's their turn to give back. So, my friend Marv, he would say, you know what, if I had shoulders like these, I would still be playing volleyball. If I had shoulders like that, I'd still be playing. If I had an arm like that, I would still be playing. I think we're good here. Hey, they got King Kong over there. Golden Retrievers, great pets, terrible blockers. Waves don't get sick. Go as hard as you can for as long as you can. How does it feel to look down upon the village when you're a giant? I think we're going like this. Waves are tough. Get up or get out. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. What kind of weather is this? Waves weather? <laughs> I like the ranking system. I still use it in broadcast today. I'll break it out here and there. There's All World, King Kong, Medium, and dog meat. You never want to be dog meat. That's it. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? Uh, you don't know till you go. Hi, Coach Dumpy. Uh, can't thank you enough for all you did for me over these years. Uh, you're the gentleman of all gentlemen I've ever met. I can't thank you enough for all you've done for me in Pepperdine Volleyball. He once told me that in coaching, you do more good than you know. So I'd like to say, Dad, as a person, a parent, a coach, an American, you have done more good than you know. What do you say, Marv? I think we're good here. <laughs>